Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video we are going to be doing a book haul which I am very excited about because when I was looking back through my videos I realized I hadn't done a book haul since February so I thought why not just do one but I also just received some book mail today and I really wanted to show you what books I picked out because I'm really excited about all the ones I got. A lot of the ones are books that I've been seeing a lot on YouTube and also on Instagram. So part of this video is like a bookstagram made me buy this, but I also thought it would be fun to kind of catch up and show you the books that I have hauled this year since March. So it's also kind of books I've bought during quarantine. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I have a lot of books to show you. I actually haven't bought that many books this quarantine, except for August. Somehow, August, I have bought so many books. One thing I did want to say is that I'm not going to be going over the synopsis of each book too much. I have read some of them already, so if I have read them, I will let you know and to let you know what I thought about them. Without any further ado, let's just jump right into this video and start this book haul. We are going to begin with all the books that I bought in the month of March. One other quick like disclaimer is that these are only the physical books that I have bought. I'm not going to get into the ebooks that I've purchased or any kind of audiobook. So as I said, we're going to start with March, which is when uh, quarantine kind of started. So I bought three books in March. The first book that I purchased was Undercover Bromance. This is the second book in the Bromance Book Club series. I think that's the name of the series. And this one follows Brayden and Liv. And these two characters we kind of met in the first book, which I really loved. These books are really cute and really fun. So this book series follows a group of prominent men in Nashville. So this group of men forms this book club of sorts where they read romance novels and they call them manuals. And they try and learn about relationships through these romance novels. It's really fun and entertaining. I have actually already read this one. It was really cute. The third book to the series comes out, I believe in October. I'm not sure, but it comes out very soon. I'm really excited about that one as well. I did end up enjoying this one. And I would definitely recommend the series if you like adult contemporary books. I think they're just a lot of fun and uh, the first one was really cute as well. The second book that I picked up in March was one of my most anticipated books for the year and that was Crescent City by Sarah J Mass or House of Earth and Blood. I still don't know what this book's title actually is. I think it's House of Earth and Blood and the series is Crescent City. I don't know why they have the title so small on the cover if it's not the name of the book. I don't, it bothers me like way more than it should. But anyways, I did read this book. I have a whole reading blog on this book, so I will leave that linked above. But I did enjoy this. I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. This is Sarah J. Mass's Dive Into Adult Fantasy. She has written YA before and though I would classify her other books as adult as well. They have very adult themes. This is officially her adult fantasy and it was really good. It was not as good as I was anticipating but I still really really enjoyed it and I'm excited to continue the series. I think that the thing with Sarah J Mass books is I find that I never like her first book the best. I really like her later books in the series once you get to know the world and the characters. In this book there is a ton of world building so it was a bit slower. Overall I did enjoy it. It has to deal with angels and fae and vampires so it has like a whole bunch of mythical creatures in it which is really fun and I really liked that element. Finally the last book that I picked up in March was the A Court of Thorns and Roses Collector's Edition. This book is a very very beautiful book. I got it at a really discounted price which is the reason I bought it. It has like a slip cover and then it has the gold foil edition book. This book is absolutely stunning. I'm so glad to have it in my collection. I do have the Throne of Glass special edition as well and I really like that one. I just love like the amount of detail that went into these books. I just think they're really stunning books all around and I'm really happy to have the collector's edition. When I saw this one for sale for such a good price. I couldn't resist picking it up. So those were the books I bought in March. I didn't buy any books in April that were physical books. I think I maybe bought two ebooks but like I said I'm not going to be talking about those books in this video. So we're going to move on to May. I bought two books in May. The first being A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is 
the prequel to the Hunger Games book. I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about this book. There was a lot of hype in me about this book. I have not read it yet. I thought I was going to pick it up, but then I kind of read some negative reviews about it. So I decided to put a hold on it until the hype kind of died down and I could give it my own thoughts and feelings without being influenced with everything I was hearing about it. I am excited to give this a read, but I am also pretty nervous about it because once I found out what the book was about, it kind of diminished my feelings on it. This is kind of a story about President Snow is all I've really heard about it. So I don't know too much. I didn't really like President Snow as a character. So I'm not sure how I feel about getting a story about him, but I will give it a try eventually. The second book that I bought in May was Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the second book in the Aurora Rising series. I did read this one, really, really loved it. The Aurora Rising series is really, really fun and entertaining and really fast paced. I'm not gonna get into the plot of this one because it is a sequel, but I will say that I read it, I loved it. It was really fun and entertaining. It has a great cast of characters. So if you are looking for something that's really fast paced and these books are super fast paced, I could not put them down. They're so much fun. So I'd highly recommend this series as well. The third and final, I think, book comes out next spring. So I'm very excited for that one as well. Moving on to the two books that I picked up in June, we have the first one, which is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is an adult contemporary book. I did read this one. I really enjoyed it. It was a really, really beautiful book and really heartfelt, but also really cute. So it had kind of a little bit of everything. It was really emotional at times, but also really funny at times and also really swoon worthy at other times. I can't say enough good things about this. I think it was like the perfect summer read for me. I read a couple of longer fantasy books this summer. So I kind of picked this one up to kind of cleanse my palette after those ones and it was perfect for that. This one focuses on two writers who are experiencing writer's block. One writes like romance novels and the other writes literary fiction. They're complete opposites but they're both having writer's block. They both end up living in beach houses next to each other. They decide to kind of switch genres and write to the other persons. And then they go on off these like field trips and giving like tips and tricks on how to write them. All the while they kind of develop this relationship with one another. It's just, it's really cute and heartfelt and beautiful. And I really liked this one. The other book that I picked up in June, which I also have already read is A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. This is her debut novel. And it is so good. I really liked this one. I read this in June pretty much right when I got it when it came out. The main characters are Malik and Karina and they are such great main characters. They're completely different but kind of similar in the fact that family is everything for them and it kind of spurs a lot of the decisions that they make. This book is inspired by African folklore and mythology and I really loved that element of the book. Mark and his two sisters are escaping their homeland and traveling to a new place. They kind of have to have like fake identities to get in and they arrive to this place then his youngest sister gets tricked and gets taken. And the only way that she can be free is if Malik makes a bargain. And his bargain is that he has to kill the princess. This book follows Malik's journey and also the princess Karina's journey and how their stories intertwine. There's a magical competition in the middle of all of it. The book takes place over seven days, so it's very action packed and a lot goes on. But one of my favorite things about this book was the representation of mental illness. I think it was incredibly well done. Malik deals with anxiety and panic attacks and I have never read a fantasy book that covers that topic quite as well as this one did. This book was so much fun and it was really action packed and I loved all of the different creatures and mythological elements. I found it really entertaining. So I think this was a really great debut novel and I really enjoyed this one. Not to mention the cover is one of my favorites from this year. I just think it's so beautiful. Next, we have the two books that I bought in July. They're actually a series of books. So the first one is Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And I also picked up the sequel, Rage and Ruin. I'd already read Storm and Fury, but I owned it as a Kindle book. And when Rage and Ruin came out, I decided I wanted to pick them up 
in physical forms. So uh, that's what I did. Read both of them. I actually reread this one and then immediately picked up this one. This is such a fun and entertaining series. If you have watched my channel before, you know, I really enjoy Jennifer L. Armentrout's writing. She writes such addicting stories that are like incredibly fast paced, very character driven, and they have a ton of angst in them. And they're just, they're highly entertaining books. This series is kind of a spinoff of her previous series, the Dark Elements series, which I really enjoyed. This is a spinoff following different characters set after the events of that series. I would personally recommend reading that series first. You do not have to, but some of the characters from that story make an appearance in this one. I just think it's really fun to get to know that storyline first so that you can appreciate their appearances in these books. I really enjoyed them. They're really fun. I love anything Jennifer L. Armentrout writes. So those are all the books I bought from March to July. So not too many books. I did pretty well for those months, but then August happened and I don't know what changed, but I bought a lot of books in August. So we're gonna go through all of those. I actually have two boxes to open that just arrived today, but I did receive four other books earlier this month. So we'll start with those ones. The first book that I bought in August was Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. I'm not gonna get too much into this because I just uploaded a vlog of my experience rereading Twilight and then reading this one. So if you want to check out all my thoughts and feelings, you can go check that out. This is Stephanie Meyer's newest release. It is Twilight Told from Edward's Perspective. It came out earlier this month. It is a incredibly long book. It's well over 600 pages, but I did read it earlier this month, like I said, and I do have a vlog on it. So you can go and check that out if you're interested. Next, I picked up the Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. This is the second book in the fifth season series. I read the fifth season in July and really loved it. It was an amazing book. So I picked up the second one so I can read that. I'm going to start this one as soon as I finish my current read. I'm really, really excited to get back into this world and see what happens. As much as I loved the fifth season, I have heard that the second book and the third book were just as good, not better. Not to mention all three of the books in this series have won the Hugo Award. And Kay Jemison is, I believe, the first author to ever win the Hugo Award three years consecutively. Like I said, the fifth season was absolutely fantastic. I gave it five stars. It was unlike any book I have ever read before. There's a lot to it. I've never seen a book unravel the way the fifth season did. I was confused for like 85% of the book but really loved it. I think that made the story because I just needed to know how it would all come together. And once I found out, it was just absolutely amazing. This is an adult fantasy trilogy. It lived up to all the hype that I have heard about these books. So speaking of N.K. Jemisin, earlier this month, I also picked up a copy of The City We Became. I'm really excited about this one as well. It came out earlier this year and I have heard amazing things about it. This book takes place in New York City. In this book, the premise is that every city has a soul and that soul is embodied by a person. I don't really know too much about it other than, like I said, this book takes place in New York and so it's actually split into the different neighborhoods of New York. So each different neighborhood has a different soul represented by a different person. I'm gonna probably try and pick this one up later this fall. I only read one of her books, but I already wanna read them all. The other book that I got earlier this month is Such a Fun Age. This is an adult contemporary book, which I'm really excited about. This book deals with doing the right thing for the wrong reason and is a bit of a social commentary. I've been meaning to read a bit more adult contemporary this year and from what I have read, I've been really, really loving it. This is a debut novel. This book deals with confronting issues of race and class and privilege and what it means to be an ally. And I'm really excited to get into it. I've heard such great things about it. Those are all the books that I previously purchased this year. But then, like I mentioned, I do have two boxes of books that just arrived today. So I'm very excited to unbox these. I kind of don't remember what I got, but I had a shopping cart full of books that had been there for a while based on books that I've been seeing around Instagram and on YouTube. And I just decided to take the plunge one day and buy them all. So let's see what I got and it will be a surprise for both you and me. So the first book in this box 
is Don't You Forget About Me. This book has been in my shopping cart for uh, probably six months or so. So I actually don't even remember what this book is about or why it was in my shopping cart. It is an adult contemporary book and it looks really cute. It's got a dog on it. <laughs> So maybe that's why. I, I can't really tell you much about this book other than it was in my shopping cart and I decided to just pick it up because I figured it was there for a reason. I think I saw this on Instagram by someone whose reviews I really like. I'm pretty sure she loved it and I added it to my cart like that day and then just kind of ignored it until now. But from what I do remember, I think it is really funny and really romantic and kind of just like a heartwarming story, which like I said, I like to read after I read fantasy just to kind of cleanse my palette a bit. So I'm hoping that's what this is. Based on the cover, I'm really excited to get into it and give it a try. I just think it looks really cute. So I'm excited for it. The next book that I have is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. This is the third and final book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I decided since I got the second book, I might as well pick up the third book because I know I'm gonna want it. I'm hoping to finish this series this year because I really, really loved the first one. And the last book that's in this first box is also by an author I have talked about already, and that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is her high fantasy book that she just launched in April. I've actually read this, but I read it on an ebook, which I read when it released. So this was a surprise release for me. I had no idea she was coming out with a high fantasy. I stumbled upon her page on Instagram, saw that she was like hyping this like surprise high fantasy book, immediately pre-ordered it for my Kindle and read it like the day it came out and really, really loved it. She did such a great job for being her debut high fantasy book. This book is so much fun and like all of her other books, highly entertaining, so much angst and swoon worthiness. She writes such a great romance in her fantasy worlds. This is the first one, but the second one comes out September 1st, which I have pre-ordered. Poppy and Hawk were some really fantastic characters. I love their story together and really, really excited for the sequel because this one left me on the edge of my seat and I need to know what happens. Moving on to the last box of books. We have One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So like I was mentioning earlier this year, I tried to read more adult contemporary and some of those books have been Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. I read uh, Daisy Jones and the Six and I also recently read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I gave five stars to both books. Absolutely loved them. They completely opened my eyes on what adult contemporary books can be like. I put off reading Daisy Jones and the Six after the amount of hype it got in 2019. And just knowing like the time period it was about, I didn't think I would like it because it didn't appeal to me at all. But then on a whim, I just randomly picked it up and I actually listened to the audiobook, which if you're gonna read it, do the audiobook because you won't regret it. It was so good. Full cast was amazing. It was just, it was my favorite book that I've read this year so far and I like am kicking myself now for thinking I wouldn't like it and not giving it a try because it got such great reviews and I can see now why it was absolutely fantastic. So after loving Daisy Jones on the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I decided I wanted to read more books by Taylor Jenkins Reid to see if some of her older books were just as good. And the one I stumbled upon with the synopsis that I felt was the most intriguing was One True Loves. What sold me was just the little like brief synopsis at the top here. It says a breathtaking love story about a woman unexpectedly forced to choose between the husband she has long thought dead and the fiance who has finally brought her back to life. And I found that really intriguing. I always love the way that Taylor Jenkins Reid writes characters. She writes these characters that just come to life on the page and they're just so relatable and authentic and I just I love the way she writes characters so I'm really excited to give this one a try. Two more books. The next book that I picked up was Bringing Down the Duke by E.B. Dunmore. This is a book I also have already read but I read it on Kindle and loved it. This book was so entertaining and so fun. This is a historical romance which is also a new genre for me, not one I typically reach for but again, was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed expanding my genres. 
So I picked this one up on a whim after seeing it all over Instagram and I read it on my Kindle, like I said, and it was so funny and entertaining and swoony. And I know it's not a word, but we're gonna just go with it. This book takes place in 1879 and follows the main character Annabelle. There's just so much like witty banter, all the like societal norms. If you watch the show Downton Abbey, I feel like this book has the same mood as that. Although like pomp and circumstance, I don't know. It was entertaining, I loved it. Anyways, I picked up the paperback because the next book, A Rogue of One's Own, comes out September 1st, which I'm very excited about and I pre-ordered it. And because I pre-ordered it as a paper book, I really wanted to have the first one on paperback and I can see myself definitely rereading this. Finally, we are on the last book and it is no other than The House in the Cerulean Sea. This book has been taking Instagram by storm. I cannot scroll through Instagram without seeing someone talking about this book. And they have been talking about this book for weeks, if not months. It's been like overwhelmingly positive and like that you have to read it. And so I picked it up because I was tired of everyone talking about this book and not knowing what it was about. I didn't even read the synopsis. I just added it to my cart because I figure if like literally every single person I see is praising this book, it has to be something good. From what I have heard about it, it kind of is inspired by the Umbrella Academy, which is like a TV show I absolutely loved. I haven't watched season two yet, so don't spoil me, okay? I'm going to get to it, I promise. But season one was absolutely amazing and I'm really excited for season two of it. But if this book is anything like that, I know I will love it. I think it has a great cast of characters, which I'm very excited about. I just decided to pick this one up so that I can read it and know what all the hype is about. So those are all of the books. Like I mentioned, I did pre-order some books. I mentioned most of them already. The only other book that I have pre-ordered is Blood and Honey by Shelby Meharan. It is the sequel to to Serpent and Dove. Blood and Honey is by far my most anticipated read of this entire year and I cannot wait for it to get here. I know some people have already read it. There were some early copies on shelves in bookstores so some people already have it. I do not. Don't say anything. I'm really looking forward to this book. I'm actually going to be doing a reread of Serpent and Dove very soon in preparation because I just want to immerse myself back in that world and get to know Lou and Reed all over again. That is the only other book I have purchased this month but don't have yet. So that is a look at all of the books that I have hauled from March to August. So in total, we hauled about 19 books since March. So it's actually not as bad as I was thinking. Like half of them were this month alone though. So I think I need to push pause. I kind of have been taking it easy the last few months. So I decided to treat myself and it's quarantine and what can you do? I feel like this year has been crazy, so why not just buy books? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this book haul. I'd love to know what books you have bought recently or what books you're excited to buy or what books you have pre-ordered. Leave a comment down below with the last book that you purchased or some books that you have purchased lately. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.